Okay, so welcome back here. Uh, we have sanded the whole area down here, and we took the uh, the uh, dust brush and uh, we swiped away all the dust from the surface here. And you can see that there's not a lot of dust has come up. So again, this that step is very important. If you don't do that step, don't even think about starting to prime yet, because the primer is not going to want to adhere to a bunch of dust. So this is the primer that I'm going to be using, and I had that tinted gray because the color that we're going to be top coat coating with is kind of like a reddish orange. So white, you, you don't want to use white. And if you use white, the white is going to match the joint compound and you're not going to be able to see any imp 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 imperfections in it because it's white on white. And if there are any imperfections, then if it dries gray, then you use the white joint compound afterward, the white joint compound is going to show up. So you're going to know exactly where to make your, your uh, sand, sand, sanding for the uh, imperfections. So this is the primer. It's made by Zinser and um, it's a primer and a sealer. Um, and, it's, and it's just for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, interior use here. So with my little brush here, I'm just going to uh, start to cut in up here. Now with the crown, I'm going to do another coat on the crown and it has to be caulked too. So I'm not worried about hitting that underside lip of the crown. Um, so I'm just quickly just putting this up here. And the good thing about getting rid of the dust too is that when you go to use a brush, you're not uh, you're not painting on top of dust because then the, the brush will start to drag and it won't and it just and then you, it's just not good so always get rid of the dust okay and then just feather back and the edge is down there now we're going to come to down here I'm just going to cut in the above the baseboard here. to lay down a lot more paint there because if you just use a, a 3 8 it's not going to create a slight texture and you definitely want to create just a little bit of texture because the existing walls have a texture okay and as you can see I'm just rolling straight up and down here Now I got to a point where there's not enough paint left in the roller, as you can see there, so I'm gonna load back up. Now, don't ever, when you get to that point where there's no paint, don't push in to try to get more paint out because you're gonna ruin the roller and it's gonna flatten out the roller so that it doesn't create a, a, te a texture again. So, all you have to do is just reload up without more paint. Now this surface that I'm priming is extremely porous. So you definitely want to use a primer that is a sealer too, because it has to be able to penetrate through and seal in the uh, porous sur surface. And in this case, the uh, porous surface is the uh, joint compound. Okay, and then when you get down here, just 
take the roll and turn it perpendicular and roll as close to the baseboard as possible. And you can do it up here too. If you don't do that, then you're gonna you're gonna see um, where the texture has stopped because when you apply it with the brush, it doesn't have that te that texture. So again, with the uh, with the uh, socket down here, I want to roll as close to that socket as possible. And you can see the slight texture that the roller or the nap that it produces. So I'm gonna, lo I'm gonna load up one more time here. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure to the wall here. I'm not applying that, okay? Some people you can see them like push in re real hard. Don't do that. Just apply a light force. And by doing that, you're not going to ruin the uh, roller. So I'm going to come up here, turn it, and come as close to the crown as possible. And then come down here and do it like that. So I'm going to put this roller back in here because we're definitely going to do a, uh, another coat of this. And it's always a good idea in, in, in between coats to put like a piece of plastic over your paint so it doesn't start to dry. Because then, then it'll start to dry here. And then when you, when you go to roll, it'll pick up those areas that have started to dry here. So if you can get the camera just to come a little bit closer, you'll actually see the texture, the slight te texture that it produces. But since this is a porous area, it's going to suck in the in the water and it's going to suck in, in, in the paint. And when it dries, that texture is going to be gone. It's going to be smooth. Because this is the first coat and a lot of that does get sucked in here. Um, so as you can see, we're looking down the wall and I don't see any signs of any bubbling or any humps in the wall. I can't see the two joints that I hit with mud on the pre on the pre on the previous coat there. Um, so we're uh, just gonna wait for uh we're 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 we're, we're gonna do this like like a, about an hour or so to dry out and then we'll be back to uh, apply a second coat of primer to help build up the surface or build up the texture so that it goes with the existing wall that already has a texture. So we'll see you on the next one.